Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, yes, I am making another fucking voiceover because, well, I kind of miss doing it. Uh, my videos are kind of getting boring, I think, and I think it's time for me to start doing more voiceovers. And what better to do it than to, to bring a Jack video? I think that Jack really needs help. He, in the right hands, can be very devastating, but... He is extremely hard to play to be honest and I'm going to show you guys some great gameplay of a Jack and different uh, setups with him and which ones I think are best. First one here we have here is an Infinite Member Pro Dynasty that I met and ranked. He's a very solid fighter and extremely skilled with Dynasty characters but honestly Ironclad, the setup I have for Ironclad is just a nightmare for Dynasty characters. I won't be one of them a few times and you, couldn't, you can't even touch Ironclad to be honest. Not my clad when you use Dynasty characters. But, and to be honest, I haven't been uploading that much because I've let the new team that I've discovered, which was originally Sarge, Clad, and Marcus, I like the team so much that I just kept playing with them and never really switched it up. But, Ever since I got Jack to Dojo 13, or level 13, I'm sorry, uh, I've been playing with him, and he's actually pretty good. I like Jack as Dojo 13, but as of right now, I'm trying to use the defensive build, which it's nice with uh, superior protection and a fortress of healing, but people play super campy against Jack, and... I just think his offensive build where you get fractures off of hitting them, whether they block it or not, is just the better choice because Jack is extremely spammy, especially with that base attack, and it just causes people to camp. But I don't like using the base attack all the time, but you know, what am I supposed to do? You know, um, his special attack doesn't have unbreakable on the first hit anymore it's really slow and people just turtle back against Jack all the time so the base attack is really the only thing you can do so when people get pissed off about base attack spamming well you can blame the developers for that for not giving Jack any actual good ranged um, attack because the base one is the only one you can do where you can actually get good range off of it was able to take out his Emperor there. He was getting some good hits on me with Emperor, but Jack is pretty tanky at level 13, so I was able to get rid of that. And this is one of the biggest problems I run into with using this build is I noticed that he's blocking a lot of my attacks, and what sucks is if I was using the offensive build, I would have been able to get more damage in with the fractures because it wouldn't matter if you blocked it or not, but you know, I can't do that. I'm hindered with my. With, uh, without that ability, so it's kind of hard. So I find the defensive version of Jack hit or miss. I mean, the Fortress of Healing is nice when you're low on health because you can keep taking hits with the Shadow Fortress and keep getting health back, but that only, that only works until you're over 25%. So he takes out my Jack with Ling, and we're just gonna go ahead and pull out Ironclad. I kind of wanted to use Marcus at first, but I was like, nah, I want to win this. And Ironclad is just on another level. I really, I do think that Ironclad is balanced because he does struggle against certain characters, even with this build. But he is a straight-up nightmare for Dynasty characters. Not so much for Heralds because they don't have that many attack strings, like where they do a lot of. They don't do like any six hit combos or anything that are low damage to give Clad a lot of stubbornness charges. They do like one or two hits that take away a lot of health. So that's where this build isn't really the greatest, but I mainly use it for Dynasty characters. And Marcus is what I use for Heralds, unless it's Oxygen, of course, but even then. I've gotten a lot better with Marcus so I can handle Ozuma without even having to worry about Shadow Form but it definitely is difficult. See, this is nice. 23 charges and almost 
Got 60% health back, so this is pretty nice. And Jet is really low damage, and she's just gonna. It doesn't. It doesn't matter really how many times Jet hits Ironclad. It's. It's actually really hilarious because you can outplay Ironclad with this build with Jet, and he's just gonna get all of his health back, so it doesn't even matter. I, I told Pro Dynasty that, dude, it's basically impossible for Jet to be ironclad with this build because this is how it works. You can outplay me and hit me all you want. It does not matter because I'm going to get all my health back and eventually I'm just going to time you out or take away all your health. Or if I outplay you, then I take away all your health, so I win either way. So there is really no way for Jet to beat ironclad with this build, especially against a good ironclad player. You know, maybe an inexperienced or a lackluster ironclad player can lose with this build, but with my ironclad, no, there's just no way. There's no way Jet can beat my ironclad. You know, ever since I made this build, it hasn't happened. I've not lost with against Jet with ironclad, so I can safely say with my build, it's basically impossible. But I have different circumstances than everyone. I'm obviously max level and have really good ironclad skills, so that helps me out there too. So obviously I got most of my health back back there and probably just, I know he's going to have to be aggressive now and push me because I'm going to time him out and that's where he's going to end up crumbling. I laugh at him there because it's just funny. Like, he tried so hard, he played really good with the chat and at the end it didn't even fucking matter. <laughs> but good game Pro Dynasty. Now this is where I switch over to the the offensive build with the Salt Fortress, and I don't really like Thrill the Battle. To be honest, I think Incredible Endurance is the better choice, but that's just personal preference. But I think that Incredible Endurance is better, and I really think that Assault Fortress is better than Fortress of the Legion, especially with the slower Shadow Fortress. I don't think that. Fortress of the Legion is necessary. I think what's nice about Assault Fortress is it's always going to help you. It's always going to come in handy when you're using Shadow Form or when you're using basic attacks with Shadow form, with in Shadow Form. I, I find Assault Fortress very nice to use. So I basically use that now. Jack against Helga. I really like this. I really like it when it's Jack against Helga, especially with this build. just assault right through all of his attacks and I knew he was gonna do the dash so I activated assault fortress and get a couple shadow or get a shadow move off and just avoid all of his dashes put the pressure on him now because you know I'm doing a lot of damage with the fractures so he can't do much take out his Helga there not looking good for him right now, but you never know what OP Ju can do. That is some really, really nice, nasty damage. I think he tried to grab me there, but it didn't work. He kind of got around me. I hate when that happens. I knew that Triumph was coming, so I activated Assault Fortress again and pull off the Shadow Move. It's one of my favorite things to do, especially against Hongju with Assault Fortress. You know, when you know that Triumph is coming and the only way to block it is to activate Shadow Form and do the up attack and deflect it. It's, it's a nice little trick I like to do. Alrighty, Revenge for Midnight. Um, I don't really understand this name because I don't know what... Uh, Whatever happened to Midnight, she's always been the biggest bitch to me, so it's nothing to <laughs> avenge her for, but okay then. A little connection problem here. I hate I hate I hate lag so much. I always have. But again, this is with a defensive build, and you know he's just gonna wait for me to do an attack and gets a special move off me. I hate players like this. You know, like Jack is really good when you're trying to play aggressive. Or like, when the enemy is trying to play aggressive against Jack, that's when Jack becomes really good, but 
rarely does someone actually play aggressive against Jax, so everyone just camps against him because of his unbreakable and shit, so that's why I find Jack extremely hard to use because you're always dealing with campers and his slow attacks don't really help. I tried to activate Blink there for some reason. Yeah, yep. I always do the special attack when I think they're gonna try to do Blink on me because what's, what's really nice about doing that is if you hit them and they, they delay their attack, it's gonna miss and Jack's gonna run away. Or if you do it, and they try to attack you immediately, they're going to hit the Shadow Fortress and get knocked out, so it's 100% safe to do the special attack against a Blink. The up attack used to work until people figured out that you can just delay the attack, and it wouldn't work, but if you do the special attack, if they delay it, Jack will run away. So that's quite nice to do. I will say, though, that Superior Protection is the best against Monkey King. You know, that ascension damage is basically nothing. And he hits me with that Jingo strike there. Oh, I did that too early. That was a good delay by him. I just really hate it because I could have gotten a lot more fractures with him. Or on him right now if I had inevitability and persistent bone breaker. But the defensive build kind of hinders me a little bit. I can use the defensive build, but it needs help. It really does. But we managed to figure out, finish off his Monkey King right there, and now it's on to Kibo. And Kibo is really hard against Jack. Or I mean, I find Kibo really hard to fight when I'm using Jack. Is the better way to say it. But with super, superior protection, it's not that bad because even if she hits him when he's unbreakable, she does little damage to him. That was a nice dash grab. And Kibo is definitely one of the best grabbers when she has that talent. I just can't help but to think like, look at all the fractures I could have gotten if I had the other build on. You know, I'm still doing great damage to her, but I know if I had the other build, I would have already killed her. And at this point, I'm just doing whatever because I really don't care if Jack dies because obviously I'm going to win. So I'll just let him finish me off there. Go ahead and bring in Marcus just because I like using Marcus. I think Marcus is probably my favorite character in the entire game. He's just so fun to use. And I've picked up his absolute control and Shadow Warrior build. I actually really like his Unbreakable. There are times where Unbreakable is actually the better, the uh, better way to go. And I just really like it. Not against Kibbo though, because Kibbo is so fucking fast. And with confidence, she just does insane damage. Look at that shit. I mean, I really don't care. I'm doing just random things because I know he's still not gonna win. But like, he did. He took away most of my health. I had like 27% health left. So yeah, Kibba with confidence is a major bitch to deal with. I'll tell you that. Yeah, okay, now we have only the best beat me. <laughs> I've actually met this guy a few times before, just um, kind of shot on him. But this is the one I decided to record because I thought it was funny. I guess if you say that only the best can beat you, then I don't know. It seems kind of egotistical to me, but okay. And it looks like he gave up or stopped playing or went AFK against Songju, but I really don't care because I'm just like, you know, it's a ranked match. If you're AFK, it doesn't I don't really care. I'm still gonna hit you and do random things. I mean, I'm just doing random things now because he's AFK, so I can just do whatever I feel like, but. Like, yeah, I probably should have waited, but it's a ranked match. I really don't care. So I just do whatever I want to. Okay, now he seems to have returned. Tries to jump over me there. I do that heavy because I knew that he was going to jump again. This guy really likes to jump for some reason. A lot of Hangzhou players like to jump, actually. But 
It was a pretty easy win for Jack because he was AFK most of the time, so he's gonna bring in his Ironclad now. And this is really, really where the defensive build with Jack really struggles because Ironclad always plays super defensive against Jack, and when you can't get those fractures in off of blocks, it is really hard to deal with Ironclad. So this is one of the main reasons why I don't like using defensive build because of Ironclad. You know, like, there's just so many times where I go against an Ironclad and I just keep hitting them and hitting them and hitting them and it doesn't do any damage to them. And not only that, I'm not getting any fractures off, so when I do hit them, it's just still little damage. At least when you get the fractures in from the blocks, when you do actually hit them, it does major damage to them. But that's not how it is with this build, and it really sucks. And one thing I really did notice that does actually suck about superior protection and the fractures is Jack will actually not do more damage off of regular attacks unless he's using unless he's using the aggression talent. Even with 20 fractures, it does not matter. He will still do the same base base damage. The only thing that fractures increases damage of is the shadow attacks. So that's why I really don't like superior protection is because you can't get any bonus damage even with the fractures unless you're using shadow attacks. So that's one thing that really sucks is you can have 10 fractures and you can think you're doing more damage with your regular attacks but you're actually not. Unless you're using aggression, you won't actually start to do more damage with fractures unless you get 10 fractures with aggression. So that, that part is really annoying. So aggression is definitely the better talent. And here I honestly just decided to play with him because I uh, thought that, well, since that he went AFK and I got a free win off of his Hongju, I thought I would just let him hit my Ironclad. I hit him a little bit too just to mess around, but I let him win this round just because I thought it'd be funny. You know, fair is fair, right? So I'll let you beat my Ironclad. But I'm still going to hit you a few times though. Because I find it funny. Get a couple of hits off there and then let him do what he wants now. Can let him get this juicy combo off. The adrenaline combo doesn't play, I get a grab off of him. I do another shadow attack because I can. Now I can let him go again. I just wanted to do shadow attacks to be honest. I'm not sure why he did his shadow attacks like that. It kind of wasted everything, but you know, that's his choice. But I had full confidence that I can come back with Marcus. That's the thing about using the Shadow Warrior and Absolute Control build is you have to cancel a lot more. You can't just swing out of nowhere like with General's Luck. Because you're going to get punished every time if you do that. Because pretty much all of Marcus's attacks are punishable in blocks, so... You definitely can't be swinging out of nowhere and you have to cancel all the time. I really think Marcus needs more pushback on his attacks, especially on his base attack. Oh, I'm sorry, not his base attack, his special attack because it's honestly not that fast. His base attack is extremely fast, so I can see why that's punishable on block, but his special attack shouldn't be punishable. Alright, now we got Helga to deal with. Nice. Duck that projectile. Good punish by him. Jump over that. Knew that shining dash was coming. Get the unbreakable off the heavy. That part is really nice. And this is really why I like Shadow Warrior. You know, I, I don't need block breakers. I just I want to get more shadow energy when I do do my successful attack. So Shadow Warrior is honestly extremely nice. And if I do need a block breaker, I can use it with Shadow Form. And this right here was just my inexperience with the 
absolute control. I forget that you can't do the four kick and heavy when you don't have reality glitch, so I did the shadow attack and obviously he punished me for it, so I don't do that anymore when I don't have reality glitch, I just do the special attack. But when I do have reality glitch, I'll do the front kick and heavy. So I'm just playing super defensively here and I'm trying to catch him. Fails to punish me on the heavy. And that'll finish him off there. It's a good game, man. Okay, if I'm being for real, I really hate the Bamboo Forest map or whatever this one's called. It's not the original Bamboo Forest, but this one, I hate it. I hate it. And I, I really, I'm really sorry that you have to see this map over and over again with this video. I don't understand why all the fights I recorded had to be this map, but I just don't like it. I really don't like it at all. I'm back again with the defensive build here. special attack. I'm just kind of just doing whatever attacks I feel like when he goes into Shadow Form because eventually he's going to hit the Shadow Fortress with Midnight and it's going to knock him out, but it doesn't seem to be the case here. on me. Oh, that was a big mistake on my part. I should not have done that. He did a stupid move and it worked out for him. So I do the special attack, and yep, he tries to attack immediately, and he hits the the Shadow Fortress. So that's why I really like Jack against Midnight when you're using Fortress of the Legion. But other than against Ozuma and Midnight, I don't think Fortress of the Legion is at all useful. Uh, Assault Fortress is pretty much always going to help you out. It makes your shadow move after a throw 100% guaranteed. So that part's nice. Doesn't seem like much at first, but trust me, it's a lot. Sarge too, man. You try to do the low attack after a throw, and sometimes it lands both of them, sometimes it doesn't, and when it doesn't, it is a easy punish, and it leads to a lot of big damage against you, so that part really sucks about Sarge is his low attack after a throw doesn't work. It doesn't even do that much damage to begin with when both do land, but it sucks when only one lands, and you can easily get punished. Alrighty, and this fight isn't Jack gameplay. This is Marcus gameplay. I ran into this guy when I uh, thought about making a Marcus video, but then I canceled that and decided to do Jack just since I got him to level 13. But this is probably one of the most annoying people to fight. You know, just of course he's using Shang and all those other stupid characters and just wants to camp until he gets full shadow bar. And I really don't care because I know I'm going to win anyway because I'm so much more skilled than him. But he just wants to sit back the entire time and use his shadow attacks with Shang. Yep, that stupid arrow. He is getting good damage on. I won't get good damage off. I won't lie, but I really hate characters like this, or pe players like this, not characters. Well, Shang is gay too, but it's usually the player that's gay as well. Get the heavy off right there. Catch him out of the air. Another heavy. Yes, sir. Get your shadow for him. Go ahead and do the shadow attack. I should have probably done the special because it would have killed him, but it's okay. The jump kick works too. And I just laugh at him because this guy is just... The reason why a lot of people hate this game is because of players like him. They just want to camp the entire goddamn time. You know, even when I went against stronger players, unless it was Frost and I was Dojo 10, I never camped against him. I'm 
tries to do commander's press, I should have continued the special, but I didn't think it was gonna hit. Sometimes that does happen, which sucks. But it's still better to cancel your special unless you know it's gonna hit. You don't just want to swing out of nowhere. See, I could have gotten two specials on right there, but you no, know, I canceled. Tries to grab me, I get the grab on him. Yeah, that's what happens when you use Commander's Press, man. You can't react like that. You can't react to incoming damage. Punish him here with a shadow move. And he's just gonna quit. Yep, just not surprising. That's just how players like him are. They just want to fucking quit. You know, they camp. And when they start to get shot on and outplayed, they start to either emote or they just leave because they're just a bunch of pussy players and that's just how people like him are they're they're a bunch of pussies but anyways guys thank you for watching the video and i'm debating on the next video if i want to make it sarge or marcus based with absolute control and shadow warrior but let me know what you guys want to see next i'll probably do a community coast community post and a vote for sarge or marcus next with certain builds but you know, I I actually really do like the absolute control and shadow warrior combo. You know, you just have to be a little bit more skilled with Marcus to make it work, but in the hands of a right player it's a it's a deadly build. Thanks again for watching guys and Daddy Olympia out.